December 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Micah chapters 6 and 7 from the Old Testament. Listen to what the Lord says. Get up, defend yourself before the mountains. Present your case before the hills. Hear the Lord's accusation, you mountains, you endearing foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He has a dispute with Israel. My people, how have I wronged you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. In fact, I brought you up from the land of Egypt. I delivered you from that place of slavery. I sent Moses, Aaron, and Miriam to lead you. My people, recall how King Balak of Moab planned to harm you. How Balaam, son of Beor, responded to him. Recall how you journeyed from Shittim to Gilgal, so you might acknowledge that the Lord has treated you fairly. With what should I enter the Lord's presence? With what should I bow before the sovereign God? Should I enter his presence with burnt offerings, with year-old calves? Will the Lord accept a thousand rams or ten thousand streams of olive oil? Should I give him my firstborn child as payments for my rebellion, my offspring, my own flesh and blood for my sin? He has told you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord really wants from you. He wants you to promote justice, to be faithful, and to live obediently before your God. Listen, the Lord is calling to the city. It is wise to respect your authority, O oh Lord. Listen, O oh nation, and those assembled in the city. I will not overlook, O sinful house, the dishonest gain you have hoarded away, or the smaller than standard measure I hate so much. I do not condone the use of rigged scales or a bag of deceptive weights. The city's rich men think nothing of resorting to violence. Her inhabitants lie, their tongues speak deceptive words. I will strike you brutally and destroy you because of your sin. You will eat, but not be satisfied, even if you have the strength to overtake some prey. You will not be able to carry it away. If you do happen to carry away something, I will deliver it over to the sword. You will plant crops, but will not harvest them. You will squeeze oil from the olives, but you will have no oil to rub on your bodies. You will squeeze juice from the grapes, but you will have no wine to drink. You implement the regulations of Amri. And all the practices of Ahab's dynasty, you follow their policies. Therefore, I will make you an appalling sight. The city's inhabitants will be taunted derisively, and nations will mock all of you. I am depressed. Indeed, it is as if the summer fruit has been gathered and the grapes have been harvested. There is no grape cluster to eat, no fresh figs that I crave so much. Faithful men have disappeared from the land. There are no godly men left. They all wait and ambush so they can shed blood. They hunt their own brother with a net. They are determined to be experts at doing evil. Government officials and judges take bribes. Prominent men make demands. And they all do what is necessary to satisfy them. The best of them is like a thorn. The most godly among them are more dangerous than a row of thorn bushes. The day you try to avoid by posting watchmen, your appointed time of punishment is on the way, and then you will experience confusion. Do not rely on a friend. Do not trust a companion. Don't even share secrets with the one who lies in your arms. For a son thinks his father is a fool, and a daughter challenges her mother, and a daughter-in-law her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are his own servants. But I will keep watching for the Lord. I will wait for the God who delivers me. My God will hear my lament. My enemies do not gloat over me. Though I have fallen, I will get up. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. I must endure the Lord's anger, for I have sinned against him. But then he will defend my cause and accomplish justice on my behalf. He will lead me out into the light. I will experience firsthand his deliverance. When my enemies see this, they will be covered with shame. They say to me, Where is the Lord your God? I will gloat over them. Then they will be trampled down like mud in the streets. It will be a day for rebuilding your walls. In that day, your boundary will be extended. In that day, people will come to you from Assyria as far as Egypt, from Egypt as far as the Euphrates River, 
from the sea coast and the mountains. The earth will become desolate because of what its inhabitants have done. Shepherd your people with your shepherd's rod, the flock that belongs to you, the one that lives alone in a thicket in the midst of a pasture land. Allow them to graze in Bashan and Gilead as they did in the old days. As in the days when you departed from the land of Egypt, I will show you miraculous deeds. Nations will see this and be disappointed by all their strength. They will put their hands over their mouths and act as if they were deaf. They will lick the dust like a snake, like serpents crawling on the ground. They will come trembling from their strongholds to the Lord our God. They will be terrified of you. There is no other God like you. You forgive sin and pardon the rebellion of those who remain among your people. You do not remain angry forever, but delight in showing loyal love. You will once again have mercy on us. You will conquer our evil deeds. You will hurl our sins into the depths of the sea. You will be loyal to Jacob and extend your loyal love to Abraham, which you promised on oath to our ancestors in ancient times. God, we keep thinking that there's an easy way to do this. <laughs> I don't know why we do that. We always look for the easy way out and everything, uh, the path very well traveled, uh, a way to do just enough to, to get by. And the middle of, of Micah 6 is kind of like that with what should I enter the Lord's presence? With what should I bow before the sovereign God? And he goes on to talk about, well, should I offer burnt offerings? What, what about your old calves? Well, if I do that, then what about a thousand rams? What about 10,000 streams of olive oil? What if I give him my own, very own child, my very own firstborn child? Uh, will, will that work for my sin? I think we do that a lot. Now, as Christians, we are able to fully artic articulate that it's not by works that we are saved, but by your grace that we have salvation, that the forgiveness of our sins has occurred. So I'm not talking about that, but yet we continue to get that backwards, I think, in our walk with you. A lot of times you will still see us not doing uh, good works because of this amazing love that you have inside of us, but because we keep trying to atone for something, uh, there's still a guilt. And so we completely miss the power of the sacrifice of your son. We've completely missed the opportunity for your grace. Uh, to come in and happen and to, to fully rejoice and give blessings for that sacrifice that you gave to us and for us as well. He goes on to say, that's not what I want. <laughs> I want you to promote justice, fairness. I want you to be faithful and humble and kind. I want you to live obediently to what I've asked you to do. Someone I know on, on Facebook posted yesterday, actually, if you obey God, then he will love you. And that equals religion. But because God loves us, we want to obey. And that equals Christianity. I would probably even take it one step further and say that that equals a relationship. That that is what we're working towards. God, help us to quit trying to do everything else but what you've asked us to do. We seem to find busy work in ministry to keep us distracted from what you've asked us to do. We utilize our own egos and arrogance to stop us from acknowledging what you've asked us to do. We also put on masks especially at church and in front of in front of other church people so that we don't have to be true and honest to what is actually happening in our lives. God, this is the biggest area where I see huge amount of sin happen. Unrepentant sin. And sometimes it gets so bad. I can only speak for my life, but sometimes it gets so bad that we can't even see that there's a sin occurring. And we actually make things up that to us seem like reality, but in the end they're not. It's just Satan's will has, 
has caused the scales to fall over our eyes and we can't see head from tail from right to wrong all we can see is our own selfishness god help us to be intentional in all that we do including asking you to prune off anything in our life that doesn't need to be there allowing our hearts to see the truth of the things that we've made okay in our lives uh, that we've kind of substituted in order to do what you've actually called us to do god we're really good at busy work we're really good at finding other ways to get things done thinking that it will be acceptable to you you don't want a firstborn child or 10,000 streams of, of oil you want us you want us our hearts our minds our souls you want us you want us in a relationship with you you want us to become the people you originally created us to be and you ask that we glorify you through how we choose to live our lives god allow that obedience that humbleness that faithfulness to become very present in our lives that according to your will and your timing that we understand what you're asking of us and that all the misconceptions intentional or otherwise lies that we've told ourselves enough to believe that you will show us those untruths that you will show us where we have completely missed the boat but i suspect for some of us we already know where we're being deceptive and you the god who knows all and sees all and hears all you're already aware of these things so if we're trying to do busy work if we're trying to say well we're at least we're a good person or at least we don't do what so and so does god show us what you truly want from us that humbleness that obedience that relationship with you i pray this in your son's name amen